So <laughs> we have to think about putting them. So that's a good idea. Otherwise, we won't be accountable for what we say now. <laughs> <laughs> The last group. <laughs> so uh, our group dealt with curriculum and development, so I'll just go through this quite quickly. So the first thing that we thought is we need to teach a course that's interdisciplinary, so such that people from different fields can actually attend it instead of just IS and computer science. So that was um, quite important. And uh, obviously one of the things that we asked today in this workshop is what is development. So that has to be the first thing that we teach in the course. Because we felt that um, most of the students, for example, in honors or undergrad, try to create applications that can get them quick money, but they don't understand uh, the value of non-profit work or um, things that can actually contribute to, say, governmental policies. So that could be something that uh, we could talk about in the development aspect. And also uh, teach on what actually is ICT4D, which is still an ongoing debate. So that would be something that should be included in the course. And uh, we felt that uh, we also need to talk about ICT4D theories. And one of the things that we talked about is um, there are Theories are very field dependent because some, you may be working on education, health, and so on. But the students should also learn about IC, the theories that drive ICT 4D as well, uh, as alongside thinking about theories that they could apply to the different fields that they work in. And um, the other important thing we looked at is uh, the students should be taught about the current developmental challenges in the regions that they are working in because we felt that uh, the problem, say, in South Africa could be different from another place, but at the same time appreciate problems that actually are across beyond borders. And certainly, the course should also involve uh, evaluation of ICT for the um, work. So that, is, that was our answer to what we need to teach in, in the ICT for the course. Uh, in terms of how can we create an appreciation for ICT4D in all our teaching, we came up with two major points uh, because some of the group members currently teach ICT4D concepts in their, in, their, in their courses. And an interesting thing that students highlight is they'd like to be involved in real projects that are currently ongoing. And so we thought that's quite <coughs> important that students who are learning ICT4D should be involved perhaps in existing masters or PhD research projects such that they can get their hands dirty in actually applying what they are learning in class in real projects or even projects that are external to the department as well. And we also thought that, that um, <coughs> guest lecturers who are currently doing ICT4D work should be invited in the course so that the students can appreciate existing work that is currently ongoing in that area. In terms of funding, we felt that government bodies are more likely to fund ICT for e work than private uh, organizations, but still that does not um, restrict where we look for funding, but we felt government bodies are more uh, likely to be interested um, in, in this particular area. Um, on action points, um, because the ICT for d course is still, there is no single framework or there is no single course that we can actually say that, that that's what we offer or that what should be offered. The first step we thought is there should be curriculum design that involves people from different universities such that perhaps there could be a proposal on what should be in an ICT4D course that can be offered at either honors level or master's level. And uh, a conference like SACLA, which uh, I believe most of, most of us here know about, is probably a better place to talk about um, such a course because it, it's, it's, it's a conference that involves uh, lecturers uh, in computer science and so uh, one of us proposed that such a workshop could be held in a conference such as SACLA and uh, Caroline kindly offered to start the conversation on how we can integrate curriculum design in, um, across different universities. Okay, thank you to everybody for the comments. What we will do is patch all of this in and send it out to all of the participants. Um, 
I'm going to very soon hand the, hand the session over to Edwin Blake for the final remarks. But I should point out we are almost exactly on time. Uh, after the session is over, everyone at the workshop is invited to the cocktail reception that is being held by the conference, where I see some people from other workshops have finished early and, uh, and have arrived there already. So, <laughs> so yes, we should keep this, make this quick, and I'll hand it over to our final remarks. Okay, thank you, Sam. I was aware that I would have to be quick, and I can see the food going as I <laughs> So we, um, we started with uh, uh, Jonathan talking about uh, after we have access, uh, what, what, what happens then? And I have to say that that is the issue. Access is no longer the issue. But there's a warning associated with that. In 1996, there was a conference in South Africa and we wrote a position paper for that, and we said the interesting question is not access, that will be solved. Uh, and at the time, I have to warn you, Becky gave a talk uh, to the effect that there are more phone lines in Manhattan than there are in all of Africa, I think was the statistic. That has been solved. Access has been solved. No doubt we, there will be more research on access happening, but it has been solved. The, the issue really is after access. And then um, uh, Alison spoke about the uh, challenge of operationalizing uh, theory for development. So, so how do we operationalize our, our developmental theories? Uh, I have to say that when I look at the group here, which covers IS and computer science, are people <coughs> able to do that? Because IS comes from correct me if I'm wrong, more of a social science background. And computer science has a technical design focus, at least for the purposes of this conversation. And I think between those two disciplines, we can operationalize the developmental theories. You might not have done that yet. So I, um, I'm going to ask, because the same just said he's going to do this to me. So I was wondering whether the two PhD students in the corner here have any, I warned them beforehand, this is not a total surprise, <laughs> whether they have anything they want to add to what I've said. What have you found coming out of this workshop for you? Do you want to go first? Yes. Um, so, yeah. Stand up, say who you are as well. Right. Hi, I'm Thomas, PhD student. Um, so I think I'm a PhD student. PhD student. So yeah, just kind of a quick personal takeaway. I was joking with Anya here um, because we kind of had troubles figuring out sort of our, our action points and I think that as a PhD student you're also kind of trained to become this sort of competitive and somewhat selfish but still kind of caring person and that, that kind of is a contradiction and that a lot of the time when we talk about sort of collaboration and engagement those qualities don't really work the same way but in order to kind of succeed in academia, you, yeah. So I think for me personally, it was sort of finding that that balance better, and to, yeah, be able to work in the field of ICT for D. I think you have to sort of emphasize a different, uh, yeah, different sensibilities. So yeah, that was more of a personal takeaway, um, but I hope that it might help the general group as well. Um, yeah, I've actually also got a bit of a personal takeaway. So I'm, um, I'm technically from media studies, so I'm a little bit of an infiltrator here. But um, so to me, it's always interesting to hear people talk on the kind of the very, very broad topic that is ICT for B, when there are so many very particular communities within it, and most of them don't interest me whatsoever because I come from a visual arts background and I'm just very much interested in the kind of problems that, that uses kind of ICT for D as a sort of a sense making, sense making conduit in my work um, with, for that particular reason and I think that sometimes uh, as we were kind of discussing in these workshop groups um, it's, it's perhaps necessary to start more strongly breaking apart those kinds of subsections where people who are actually interested in what each other is saying can, can truly connect. I think if I think of, you know, for example, my work which looks at the democratization of sort of visual design capabilities for functional design purposes, 
and then something like Mother Teresa's work that looks at uh, healthcare and content creation. There are interesting intersections, but at the end of the day, we don't really have that much that we can kind of discuss that's in common, in terms of sort of a common, um, theor well, I suppose there's a common theoretical framework, but uh, sort of in terms of sharing our, our ideas. So that, that's kind of my takeaway. I just found that a, a lot of it is sort of not entirely applicable to everyone. People start becoming a little bit kind of uh, um, want to disagree with each other and get, get a little bit fighty about stuff, but when that's not really the issue. It's, it's because these domains are so very different, and it's always very different depending on which problem they're working on. It's all very contextual. Yeah. Thank you. I assure you the food is not disappearing at any time. It's really rapid right yet. Um, to summarize from what I heard, and I'm just, just the impressions that the uh, groups made on me, it seems there is a need for some sort of special interest group, some, some kind of grouping. I think that was clear from a number of the presentations. Um, it intrigued me in the curriculum group coming up with what I took to be a need for field work at least for involvement in actual projects. And that is an extremely hard problem to solve. Trust me, I've tried. Um, so what I wish to end with, uh, I have a lot of other points here, but I'm not going to mention this, is, is my favorite theoretical quote. And it, it is the following. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. Karl Marx's is Thank you. Edwin for having to have the last word. Um, I wondered if everybody would be um, happy to join at the front for a sort of a commemorative uh, group photograph to sort of commemorate the um, joint ISAC ICTC workshop. So if you're willing to do so and you're not too hungry, it'd be great. We could just all have a group photograph at the front. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.